boxing. Nate James, in the closing seconds of overtime, misses a long three-pointer for Duke. Despair, their first game, their first loss. The national champion UConn Huskies fared no better. The tenacious Iowa Hawkeyes left the Huskies worn and beaten. For Jim Calhoun, the season starts on a sour note. And these are the faces of champions, two of the best college basketball programs of the 90s. Duke, a runner-up last year, runner-up to number one UConn. But they both found out last night that was last year, and this is now, because Duke and UConn will meet in the consolation of the Coaches versus Cancer Icon Classic. Stanford and Iowa will meet in the championship game. Welcome inside Madison Square Garden, everyone. John Saunders alongside Dick Vitale. I know when you got your schedule before the season started, you said, I can't wait to get that great matchup between Duke and UConn. Well, you've got it. I'll tell you one thing, John. We got it in the consolation game. But as you said, two proud programs, two of the great programs in the 90s. In fact, to me, Duke is the team of the 90s. The bottom line is both coaches, Mike Krzyzewski and Jim Calhoun, know how to get teams to come back. Hey, think about it. Last year, these teams lost two games. Tonight, one of them will leave here with two L's. But I'll tell you one thing. The one great thing about college basketball, losses early don't eliminate you from the hunt for a national championship. And they will be in the hunt. The storyline for both games last night, very similar. Neither of these teams did much up front. Everything was perimeter, John. Everything was shoot the three, shoot the three. Somehow, Duke has got to get some scoring on the inside. Carlos Boozer, I believe, is a kid who can provide that for them. On the other side, Connecticut went exclusively with perimeter play and Kevin Freeman has got to find a way to go back inside and get him some scoring as does Bosco and Saunders it's still Duke and Connecticut baby it should be a lot of fun both of these teams will be intense tonight neither wants to go 0-2 it's going to be the young fellas for Duke they're going to have to step up against the number one team in the nation this matchup because the loser will go to 0-2 let's take a look at our starting lineups and they'll be similar to they were last night for Duke. They start the freshman at point guard, Jason Williams. Nate James, who struggled yesterday. Chris Carrowell had a career high. Shane Battier was tremendous from the outside. Matt Christensen and Nate James, the guy we're talking about, had one point last night. 0 for 8 from the field, including the final shot of the game in overtime. Well, you know, John, he had such a brilliant preseason as you look now at the Connecticut lineup. Khalid El Amin starting at point guard. Albert Mooring, who's going to have to do more tonight. Kevin Freeman, Edmund Saunders, and Jake Voskel. And Jake Voskel did not attempt a shot against Iowa Day. You know, he picked up two quick fouls inside, and he was dominated by the kid Jakes. Jakes played outstanding. Let us not forget that Stanford and Iowa played outstanding basketball. You look at the Iowa kids, they played with a lot of enthusiasm, and Oliver was such a star early in the game. On the other side, Stanford got great balance. You need balance to win. Jim Calhoun readies his treats, and there's Mike Krzyzewski. Well, you can see what he has done, and everybody knows about the national championships and the trips to the Final Four and just everything he has done for the world of college basketball. And if there's been someone to rival him, maybe not on the Final Four level or the national championship level, but as far as success in the 90s, Jim Calhoun is right there. Well, what he has done for that program at Connecticut, Lou Perkins and I, a fine athletic director who does a great job. We're talking before the game. He said, I got one of the premier coaches in America. He knows how to win. What he has done to build the enthusiasm and spirit in that Connecticut program, he's a Frank Lloyd Wright. He's an architect. So you don't think I even know that? Architects. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 Referees for tonight's game, Jim Burr, John Cale, and Bob Donato. We are about ready to get things underway. Bosco goes up and taps to Saunders, and we're underway. See, I would get some touches right out of the gate to Bosco inside. Make them feel appreciated. Elamine, the thumb in the air, drops it to Freeman. Back to Bosco. Elamine has it again. Warren comes off the screen, wants a closer look. The shot is up, runs around no good. Saved by Duke and Jason Williams off to the run. Jason came up to me before the game tonight. He said, I want to apologize for my performance. I said, you don't have to apologize for anything. He figures this is uh, New York. He's from New Jersey. It's like being on Broadway. He had 10 rebounds and he scored 13 points. Christensen nowhere to go. Comes back out to Williams. His shot a little long. High rebound. Freeman had it. 
Uh, for him, Duke basketball. Last year when you had Duke, they had such presence in the post with Elton Brand, so good that he became the number one selection in a the draft. Then they were able to come off the bench with someone like a Chris Burgess. A Burgess would be unbelievable this year in a Duke uniform. Unfortunately, he's down in Utah. Shane Battier was launching a three. No good. And well, Battier is more than capable of knocking that down. You'd like to see him on the blocks a little more, I think. There. Yeah, John, they got to attack the basket. They didn't get enough free throw attempts last night. Saunders leans in. Great high-low entry. Saunders got to provide that ability, and he has that kind of talent. You know, I said, unfortunately, Burgess is not here. Rick Majerus says, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. Fortunately, he's with me at Utah. He doesn't see anything unfortunate about that. And we got a turnover in the corner. Both these clubs, when you look at their jerseys, you look at the coaches, the intensity, the pride is unbelievable. They have such unbelievable passion for playing and knowing how to win. And last night, both these teams got down big early. 10-0 Duke was down, 14-2 UConn was down. Well, UConn was down 15 also at one time. Freeman thinks about the shot, in for a closer look. Loses the handle. Jason Williams comes out of there with it, leading the break. And there's James. His the first deuce. basket of the year, James. What a way to get it, Jam City. Nice look by Jason Williams. Three on one. Made the right pass. Roscoe trying to make a move in the post, and Christensen was there, and the ball goes out of bounds. Here's the freshman, Jason Williams. There he is, spinning out. St. Joe's with touch He's going to be a very good point guard. James running the court. When you're struggling as a shooter, that's what you got to do. Get some easy baskets in transition. Daddy Yang, Saunders all over him, so Carowell comes to his relief. You're right, John. They got to try to attack the basket, post up a little bit more with Daddy Yang. Carowell can also post inside. Carowell pulls up, launches a jumper, a little long rebound to Vasco. Alameen quickly on the break, dumps it down for Mooring. And the foul is going to go against Duke. Looks like Alameen got knocked down up on top. Well, he made the original pass and then trailed the play, so didn't quite see exactly what happened to Alameen. Had a super conversation with him this morning, and I'll tell you, he was in great spirits. Really had a very positive attitude. He said, the loss, I believe, is going to help us to mature. There's the dump down. 45-degree angle, mooring with the drive. And Alameen's in the back. I wonder if he tripped over... Jason Williams, perhaps, up the room. No. Battier. Oh, there's oh. contact by Battier. Battier didn't see him and ran him down. Elbow to the jaw. Here's a key player for Connecticut. The guy that they got to replace is Ricky Moore. Moore gave him such presence defensively. I thought individually, as an individual defensive player, Moore was the best in America. Mooring can play defense, but he's also going to provide the jump shot to make up for the loss of Richard Hamilton's jump shot. Yeah, Mooring just 2 of 10 from the field in the loss last night. But it's early, baby. It's early. No reason to panic. That's what makes this one so much fun. I mean, this national championship game a year ago. Carowell with the move. Backs Freeman up. Christensen was wide open. Tough pass to get. Gives it up. No good. Oh, James. Grabbed the rebound and hit the deck hard. I've had a lot of hustle, a lot of scrapping and clawing going on out here. It's like a little NFL action. You knew these two teams were going to be intense, trying to avoid the second loss. And here's a look at it. We'll get to it in just a moment. This is a diagonal pass. He pushes it is wide open. And they converge on the basket. See, they're going to leave Christensen basically open. He's got to be able to convert some of those around the basket. Battier attacking the basket that time. Battier's going to have a phenomenal year, John. He's a complete player. There was no doubt. He sent a message loud and clear last night that I'm going to assert myself offensively. In fact, last year, the most shots he ever took in the game was 13. He took 19 last night. Carowell, the most he ever took in a game was 15. He took 20 last night. Well, that's all well and good, although they're going to have to get offense spread around a lot more than that. Because he was only 5 of 19. Better from three-point range, as a matter of fact. Four of nine from three. Well, he's capable of attacking the basket, and that's why you were right when you said that Battier has got to give him some points inside as well. Ajudang has checked in for UConn. 
Very skilled player, talked about him last night, multi-dimensional in terms of the perimeter, but has to really learn how to play in a five-on-five -five situation, both defensively and offensively. But we had an offensive foul away from the ball underneath the basket. Last year a was three second call is what it was. Last year was such a classic, and Ricky Moore set the tone right out of the gate. He dominated early in that basketball game. Carwell now looking for an opening, trying to lose Freeman. Williams just launches a long three, rattles around no good. Big rebound by Freeman. See, Jason shot the three again right there. I think he's got to attack the basket more. He has the ability to break a defender down. Warren now with James pounding him back into the hands of El Amin. Warren drives to the baseline, backs his man up, dumps it down to Saunders. Christensen all over him. Nice pass underneath to Dang. Freeman gets it, has it rejected. Dang nearly has it, and Albert Morin grabs it and pulls out of there with it. I tell you, both clubs are really stepping it up in terms of effort here tonight. A lot of intensity. See, he's 6'10", and he wants to play more like 5'10", I should think. He likes to play out on the perimeter. Oh, it's a nice strip by Jason Williams from behind on El Amin. It's a nice education for you. Playing against a guy like El Amin right out of high school, Jason Williams. That'll be over and back. As Battier could not handle the pass. Jason Williams. A little trickery on El Amin. It's early, and it's 4-3 UConn. Now 4-3 UConn, also here joining us, Jay Bellis. Jay. John, UConn coach Jim Calhoun keeps blue index cards by his television set at home, and on those cards, he takes notes about the teams that he sees on TV. Since Duke is on television so much, he's got a lot of blue index cards on the Blue Devils, and last year he took notes on how Duke was able to break full court pressure to score. What's notable in this game today is that UConn has not put on their 2-2-1 three-quarter court pressure against the Blue Devils. They've chosen more to stick with their half-court man and some token pressure in the backcourt by Khalid el -Amin. It'll be interesting to see if he goes to that 2-2-1 later on in the game, John. No, exactly, Jane. He told us that he probably will mix it up a little bit. Saunders shot and fall. Nice move by Saunders to get free in a lane, but you got to convert that wide open in a three-second area. UConn one for four from the field. Duke one for seven. So these teams have kind of started tonight the way they left off last night. Both teams really playing and inserting themselves defensively. Little zone right there by Duke. Warren's shot is no good. Daddy Aker, or rather, that was Boozer with the rebound. And so Williams now dumps it underneath. Oh! <laughs> Batty ain't traveled. He got the pass back from Dunleavy and then kind of caught it midair and came down walking. Yeah, Batty ain't was surprised. Dunleavy with a good look. Freshman from out of Portland, Oregon. People familiar with the name. His dad, the coach of the Portland Trailblazers. There's the no look pass by Jason Williams. And there's the little look by Dunleavy. Sometimes you can be a little too unselfish. You're five feet away from the goal. You got to think about taking the ball to the basket. Very explosive. Tony Robertson has outstanding potential. I watched him last year at the Adidas basketball camp. Really very impressive out of Providence, Rhode Island. Played at St. Andrews High School. We got him out there with Elmine right now. And Bosco attempting a shot, which is good news for UConn because he did not attempt a shot last night. Plays too good not to get touches inside. They got to get more touches on the interior to guys like Bosco and Simon. And there's what that guy can do off the bench. Dunleavy just comes up firing and buries it. Well, he's got great range as a shooter. Very active player. A lot of size, 6'7 for a wing player. The team was concerned uh, during the warm-up tonight. He hit the deck and was holding his ankle. He did get up under his own steam. Clearly not affected by it, knocking down that jump. Well, his dad and his uncle both played at South Carolina. I wonder how they were able to get him away from the Gamecocks. He almost went to Stanford. You see the shot clock now down to six as Elamine launches and rolls it home. I tell you, he got rolling in that second half. He was brilliant last night in the second half. Scored 24 after going one for seven in the first half. Just a deuce. Williams does That's it what he's got to do. The boozer and he reverses. That's what he's got to do. Jason Williams attack the defense, create opportunities off the dribble penetration. Robertson from outside, no good. Carrollwell with the rebound. That was a sensational play by Jason Williams. Dunleavy has an easy lane to the basket. Get it to you. Jim Calhoun wants a timeout right now. He gets quickly off the bench as Duke 
strings together a number of baskets and grabs a 10 to 7 lead. Nice drive. Look at him get the lane. What a nice dump inside. And he got the timeout, baby, because they didn't hustle back, John. Three point lead on an 8 3 run, Nick. Hey, John, both teams have been known for their great transition ability. The ability to get from the defensive end to the offensive end. We're going to see now Duke getting out, and we're going to see a poor job by Connecticut in defensive tra transition. Freeze it. See, right here. Nobody stops the ball. Look at all the white shirts. Nobody back. He's got an open lane. In this lane, they get an opportunity for the quick layup. There it is. Wide open. Nobody back. Stops the basketball, and they get an easy layup in transition. And a little help from Shane Battier in the lane is he wiped out a couple of the Huskies, made it that much easier for Dunleavy. Well, the one thing you got to do is you got to really hustle back. Look at a good defensive stance right now by Jason Williams. He knows he's got his hands full tonight. El Amin crosses over. Comes up empty, though. And Duke clears the boards. Williams ahead to Dunleavy, who pulls up and launches a three that's off the mark. Saunders knocks it to El Amin. Ahead to Freeman. Freeman takes it up strong, a little too strong on the glass. Boozer with the rebound. Freeman last year, the MVP, got the big gold trophy in the Big East Championships. This kid is going to be a solid point guard. We said it last night. First freshman to start at the point since Bob Hurley in 1989-90. Hurley obviously was a special, special guard. So for him to be the first to do it since then is saying plenty. Don't forget, here's tonight's uh, ESPN2 lineup. Edge NFL matchup at 8.30, followed by Friday Night Fights. 11.30, the NFL tonight, and then at midnight, NBA tonight. Find out everything in your favorite sports. NFL coming up this weekend, of course, and the NBA, what's been going on tonight. Jason Deuce. Jason's thinking too much, John, on that shot and that release rather than just catch and shoot. Look at Bosco. Now, you're going to tell me he shouldn't get the basketball. He should have had it a little bit earlier. Now it's too late, so they outlet the frame in, and then a reset as El Amin comes to the ball. See, recognizing and knowing how to get the ball inside is a special art. El Amin drives, pulls up, dishes to Saunders, comes up short on his hook, gets it back, sticks it off the glass. You got to go up strong and convert that. He made a tremendous look. Look, not getting back to get. Not getting back. That's a no-no. That's a no-no. Hey, Jay Billis, come on. You got to tell those guys they got to hustle and get back. Wait a minute. No, he can't. He says, no, no, I'm a dookie. I'm a dookie. No, he's very objective here. He does a great job for us, too. Yeah, he does indeed. But we do remember him in that blue uniform, 86, Final Four. Well, we'll give him that opportunity tonight. He's allowed to have a little feeling for Duke. Elamine dumps it off to Mooring, tries to lose Carroll to Saunders, who has Horvath right in his face, dumped underneath. Again, UConn has to pull it out. Ten on the shot clock as Freeman launches and rattles it home. See, that's where Freeman is comfortable. I don't believe he is comfortable making that adjustment to try to play on the wing. Put into the small forward position, which was Richard Hamilton's last year. Williams doesn't get it, but Carroll goes after the rebound strong. And he's going to reset it for Duke. See, Carlos Buzo was open right there. They want him to be a little bit more aggressive. I really believe he's a key for Duke. If Boozer can come in and give him some offense in the post area, they'll be a better basketball team. There's Boozer from just above the free throw line. Comes up short. Elamine ahead for Vosco. Slams it on. Oh, hello. Look at the big guy. Hey, Jake the surfer out in transition. Nobody rotated back defensively. Jake Vosco, welcome to the 99-2000 season. See, that's Connecticut basketball. Get out in transition, run, find the open man. Dunleavy, kind of no man's land there. Dishes it off to Williams. Carowell now. They got four diaper dandies on the floor right now. Do four freshmen and Carowell. Carowell spins into traffic. Vosco is there, and the foul goes against UConn. And Calhoun looked like he was well ready to strangle someone on that call. Number two on Vosco, and that has to be concerned for him and coach Jim Calhoun. But Vosco, who didn't attempt a shot last night, gets an easy one to get things started tonight. Any shot of that? I can get, like, a, a guest appearance on that sitcom? No, I'm going to get you on my before? sitcom. Yeah, hoops, baby. I had so much fun with the Iceman. He's the great guy. By the way, it's not enough. It's not enough that you're Dick Vitale. you got to take on other identities, too. you got to be two people now.
I thought, I wish I had his hair. I wish I had his hair. Look at that good looking guy. Jay Bosco on the bench with two fouls now. That's been the story of his career. Dunleavy from the outside. What a nice little curl move. Set play. Dunleavy and Williams. And these kids are going to be special players in a Duke uniform. Robertson running the point now. He's a combination guard. He's a very explosive player. Freeman into the paint, a little jump stop, and the jumper's good. Can't allow him to get in that area. Once he gets in the three-second area, he's automatic. Here comes the 2-2-1 press that Jay Billis was talking about earlier. Carowell got to step to the basket. Dribble. Dunleavy gets it across to James, and then Battier to Dunleavy, who's wide open for three, and it's good. Can't allow him to shoot the rock, baby. This kid can stroke it. He can stroke it. He's been around basketball all his life. Robertson will face Carowell. Oh, that was going to be a tough hand. Pass rather for Azure Ding to get and almost picked off by Dunleavy. Dunleavy, who's got eight points in this contest already. See how he knows? He runs right to the three point line, John. He knows where that line is and he knows what to do once he catches the ball in that area. And you see the bench respond. The fellow freshman. Freeman with it, Battier. Set up in that defensive Duke stance where they get low enough to slap the floor. It's a matchup right now. You got Asia Deng on the interior, uh, exterior. Freeman working on the freshman. Dunleavy help comes by Christensen and James gets the rebound. Good offensive set though right there. Getting the ball inside to Freeman. He's so effective usually in that area. Dunleavy again is open. This one won't stay down. Aju Dang with the rebound. Then the long pass for Saunders. Picked up by Dunleavy, but Freeman gets it. He leans in, and that is oh, by Battier. Oh, Battier says, get it out of here. He was America's number one defensive player last year in terms of being selected at the end of the year. I think he's a great team defensive player and that he plays well within the confines of the rules of the defensive scheme. Shot clock down to eight now as Azure Deng has it well away from the basket trying to beat Battier. Deng trying to play one on one which I know Coach Calhoun's not going to like and they don't beat the buzzer. Great defensive effort right there by Duke and it was all created by the pressure by Battier outside on Deng. But Azure Deng's got to give that ball up. Exactly. Yeah, he wants to show everybody he can handle it. And he can be very impressive in a workout. You see a kid at 6'10 handle a rock, but that's not within a five on five situation. Nice defensive play by Duke. And then Freeman tips it ahead to Robertson. Dunleavy gets back. Azure Deng, though, gets the conversion. Nice look inside. Nice conversion by Deng. See, the one area I think that Jason Williams is breaking down, John is the rotating of coming back and protecting the basket. And that's part of your point guard's mentality and responsibility. One point lead for Duke. Williams now dumps nice it down to Christensen. Couldn't get the handle. Finally gets it, gets it up on the glass. No good, taps it around, still no good. And then we get a foul underneath. Tough luck for Christensen, really working hard inside. Here's a kid, very limited experience. Timeout on the floor. And Shane Battier was their leader last night. Tonight trying to do it defensively as well. And what we'd expected, a tight one-point game. A coach is there to give hope. 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 A coach is there with answers. That's what the American Cancer Society is for people who are battling cancer. A coach, a coach in the most important, important, important game of all. Life. 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 Hope. Progress. Answers. Point lead, 7.28 to go, and Dick Yukon did come with the press, finally. Well, here's their 2-2-1 two, two, setup, and right now they're trying to get a lot of ball movement against it. You want to utilize a diagonal pass. They're trying to retreat, not any trapping areas. But here's the key. Dunleavy running to freeze it right here. See Dunleavy running right to the three-point line. They're going to get it to him here, and that baby's going down. Right to the wide open area, right to the three-point line, and he knows how to fish and finish. And be and nothing but nylon. He knows how to fish too, probably, I would yeah. imagine. <laughs> 
Freeman comes to the ball as James gets out on him in a hurry. Elamine back on the floor. Carowell gets a hand in his face. Saunders turns on Christensen. Shot gets on the iron, won't stay down, and Freeman grabs the rebound. Now looking for some help. Really active inside now. There he is, posted inside where he's comfortable, number 33. Cox with the ball. In his first four time tonight. Looks to drive. Dumps it down for Dang, who can't handle it. Cox, another kid, a freshman, highly acclaimed. Played at the same high school as Chris Smith, former outstanding player at Connecticut. Out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. One of the big time recruits, the first big time recruits is Carroll leans in for Coach Jim Calhoun. He's been really quiet tonight, Carroll. That's the first deuce for him, I believe, isn't it, John? Yes, it is. He's got four points now. Had 28, though, the other night. Last night to be exact. 28, and that's a career high. Elamine drives to the lane, dumps it back out. Hey, James got a tough assignment. He's playing Kevin Freeman right now. Saunders dumps it down to Aju Dang. See Aju Dang moving without the basketball. Gets the open play. Waller makes a good play. Good execution by Connecticut. Cox staying all over James. Couple of freshmen. Battier with it now. Aju Dang. Uh, had to grab him because he was about to see the backside of Shane Battier going around him. I think Battier can take him down inside and attack the basket a little on him as well because he's very inexperienced on a defensive end. You know, familiarity is really going to be a key also in basketball. And obviously, these kids haven't had a whole lot of time playing with one another. Yeah, I mean, this is a game they play at the end of the, end of the year instead of at this point, so you know it's tough. Freeman, head to Saunders, back to Freeman. and tries to break on the other end. James leans in and gets the roll. That's Nate James. I mean, what a great play he made there. That's the kid that they saw during their pre-season workouts. Last night, we did not see Nate James. Stanford shut him out. Here's now, the break. Watch the trail man. There's the trail man. Good communication. They communicate in transition. Freeman, I'm behind you. I'm behind you. Get me to rock. James looking to convert the three-point play. He was a big-time high school star. Maryland thought they were going to get him out of the Washington, D.C. area with the St. John's Prospect Hall. Same school that produced Jason Capel. He's back healthy this year for North Carolina. Duke with the trap, and they get the turnover. But Jason Williams steps out of bounds going after the loose ball. Yeah, that trap created a turnover. Hey, North Carolina, they say he's going to trap a lot more this year. But I know they got good news when Ed Coda was reinstated. Without question, Terrence Newby and Ed Cota, a little altercation involvement in that. And they were suspended, but have now been reinstated. I think they're going to have a great year this year. I think they're going to be a team with great balance. And the kid Joe Forte, John, remember that name out of the Matha. He is going to score big. He and Keith Bogans played together, and Bogans now Kentucky is going to have a great year as well. Roscoe draws a double team, so he finds Robertson. To Freeman, his shot is good. That's three. I tell you, Kevin Freeman really playing well tonight. Nine points for Freeman. He's over the thousand point mark in his career. Came out of Patterson Catholic High School. Was a teammate of Tim Thomas. Now in the NBA. Bosco and Christensen bump. It's a nice, creative move to get in there, but turnover. Connecticut basketball as it goes out of bounds. Dick, I know you've been following the Sports Century 50 Greatest Athletes wow. as I have, and I'm telling you, number 11, Joe Lewis, is one that everyone absolutely admires and looked up to. Heavyweight champion from 1937 to 49, longest of any heavyweight, but was just a great man as well. Well, you know, having coached in Detroit, I've heard so many stories about Joe Lewis, and they've all been very positive. His dedication to youth as a champ was special as well. Is a long three and not a good shot. No. Not a good shot at all. Pressure on him. He's an experienced player. I can see a Jason Williams doing that, but you can't see a veteran All American player doing that. Najee Dang picks up his second foul of the game. College basketball is so dominated this year, I believe, by point guards. There'll be so many outstanding point guards. Scooty Penn, Mateen Cleaves when he comes back, Eric Barkley right here at St. John's. Foul is. 
on Khalid El Amin, who reaches in. He's picked up his second, so the foul starting to mount a little bit for Jim Calhoun's squad. I'll tell you, John, if I were coaching, the first thing I'd want to do is lock up a great tandem for the backcourt. And when you think about backcourts right now, I think the best of the country is going to be down in Columbus, Ohio. I really believe Scooty Penn and Michael Red. And then right here in New York City, I believe Barkley and also Mr. Thornton are going to really excite people. Hey, Temple's got dynamite perimeter players with Sanchez, Watt also the kid uh, Lynn Greer coming back and Wadley. Oklahoma State's got Gottlieb and Atkins and a bunch of guys, Alexander Mason, who can play in a perimeter. As you dang gets ahead of, oh, got ahead of Matty, but then our Boozer out, and Boozer steps in front. You could just see, though, that Aju Dang is going to be a major factor at Connecticut. You really can, John. It's just a matter of him getting into the flow of the game. He was almost in the flow of the next game on this one because Boozer just kind of clipped him with the hip as he went past him. Obviously, he's got to get stronger physically. Got to fill out that frame. He's only been playing basketball for nine years. Pick up the game until his family relocated in England, which is something they, they had to do originally from the Sudan. And, and the government was overthrown there. His father was a member of the government. And he moved to, to London. That's where he picked up the game. I didn't know you were such a history buff. I mean, you're right on top of it. You're right on top of it. You're probably an A student in history. <laughs> <laughs> I can't name the current president, though, therefore I'm not qualified. <laughs> Turnover on Duke. It's about what we've expected thus far. Mike Krzyzewski looking on. Freeman gets it back. Skies and jams it in. And Evan Saunders says, hey, I like that. Tied up. Tied at 24 apiece last night. 47 of the points came from Carwell and Battier for Duke. But tonight, Dick, the freshmen are taking over. Yeah, the freshmen are really getting some production. There is Boozer with a nice reverse layup after the penetration. Is Dunleavy shooting the jump shot? He's been stroking that three. Dunleavy already tonight with 11 points, four of six from the field right now. So spreading the wealth around a little bit. For UConn, there's good news. They had 21 points at halftime last night against Iowa. 24 points tonight. Let's check in with Jay. Robertson with the ball now. Trying to get that high post screen from Bosco. Dumping it down for Freeman on the baseline. His jump shot is good, and that stroke's looking pretty good there. I'll tell you one thing, he looks a lot better catching and shooting and facing right now. Great screen inside, though. Bosco gave him that opportunity. 11 for Freeman. He's going to have to face to play at the next level. He'll play at the next level. He's a tough, competitive kid, good attitude, very physical. And nice rebounder there as well as Freeman goes up on the miss by Carowell. He has really stepped up here tonight. Freeman gets it again. James quickly out to meet him. Oh, they missed Bosco. Oh, he wants it. He has great post position. He's a little frustrated right now. I don't blame him. Aju Dang off the mark. Bosco hey, says, hey. that's a pass, I guess. He said, you guys don't <laughs> want to give me the rock? I'll just get it off the glass and lay it in. Come on, get me some touches, baby. I mean, you could have seen the frustration on his face. He was posting so well. Williams comes off the screen is short with the jumper oh, what a nice back tip. up and in by Carowell. Now watch Bosco inside trying to get position. Elamine pulls up backing up as he launches a shot. Carowell with a strong board. Timeout. Mike Krzyzewski looks like wants a 20 second timeout. Well 30 now. Every, every 30, timeout, that's right. 30, 30 seconds. seconds timeout. New rule right now. Five 30 second timeouts are allowed. No longer a full timeout. Got stuck back in yesteryear. This is a change in the rule for this season. The 10 extra seconds. And the reality of it is not, they were never 20 second timeouts and they were never 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> They're a little longer. Don't forget at halftime, Digger is here. Digger Phelps will join. Oh, where is he? He's working. He's sitting inside. He's working the house. Right now. There he is right there. Digger working the house. 
Shaking hands, shaking uh, hands. Yeah, yeah, take a look at this. Running he wants for, to president. for president. He's in New York City. He's doing his notes. He's got all kinds of notes. That, that's oh, that's oh, a list oh, of notes. the that's a list of the restaurants that Digger's <laughs> gonna go to tonight after the game as opposed to talking to Steve Offer. You should be preparing for that. I know one thing. He will not reach down in that pocket, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the next check he picks up will be the first. <laughs> We'll look back and we'll talk to Steve Alford tonight at halftime. It's coming up in about two minutes. Battier. Oh, my goodness. No defense at all. No help. Vosco got beat, but there was no help to come over. Battier active on the inside. Look at the smile on his face. He's like, I can't believe I was that open. Got a smile on Jimmy Calhoun's face. Now watch right here. Drives to the basket. Right down the lane with a little jam. He's going to have a big time year. There's no doubt he'll be an all ACC player for sure this year. And three fouls now on Aju Dang. Patty pumped up as they've scored the last four points to get this thing tied up again in the three point play. Conversion gives Duke the lead at 29 28. I got three all ACC players already. This season, I can start. Before it's all said and done, they'll be locked. Ed Coda, Batty A, and Terrence Morris. Yeah, so hard, now we only got to find argue two. With that. Now we only got to find two. So <laughs> folks that aren't at Maryland Duke in North Carolina might not be that happy about that. Freeman loses it. Warren thinks about the three. Closer look, launches off the shot clock. Freeman, to me, is showing a lot of diversity in this game. He's really attacking the basket, even though he had the ball pop out of his hands right there. You got to like his body structure. Williams tried to drive. Alameen may got a piece of that, but it's out of bounds. And that'll be Connecticut basketball. 136 to go. You know, it's sloppy play, John. There's not that smooth, fluid offensive system you'd like to see. But again, I pointed out it's November 11. Or is it the 12th? <laughs> is it the 12th? On, on my oh, calendar it says the 12th, so I, I don't know. I'm still living November 11th. <laughs> you might be. You might have last year's calendar. I'm still shocked to see these two teams playing at 6:30. Dunleavy gets a turnover as Saunders tried the entry pass to Vosco. Williams thinks about a long three. Saunders gets a piece of that, goes out of bounds, so it will still belong to Duke. The key for Duke is going to be the penetration of Jason Williams. I think when he gets back and they got a week to practice before the next game, Johnny Dawkins and those guys are going to work on his game and get him to attack. He knocked down the three right there, but they got to get him to utilize his strength and his ability to break defenses down. As you look at the former player of the year, Johnny the Dawkins. Best. Quinn Steiner makes his debut tonight with Missouri against Wisconsin up at the Cuse. Mike Krzyzewski is going to, they could form a league of guys that would be his former assistants. And Tommy Amaker, of course, at Seton Hall. And you can bet Johnny Dawkins will be moving along as well at some I'll point. I'll tell you one thing. Next year, when they win big Seton Hall, I'm going to start screaming, that's my alma mater. Clock is down to eight as Saunders grabs it on the baseline. Vosco swings it back outside, and Mori knocks down a three. And that's what they got to get out of Mori. They got to get that trifecta. That's got to become an integral part of their offensive set. One point game, 15 seconds to go. Freeman steps out high on Carowell. What a matchup. There's two Warriors going head to head right there. When you look at college basketball, you don't find two guys tougher than Freeman and Carroll. Spread the floor for Jason Williams. Dumps it down to James, who gets it up on the glass, but not enough to get it to fall. And time expires. And as you might expect, a tight one. Jim Calhoun, defending national champions. Mike Krzyzewski, he has two championships in the 90s. A one-point contest, seven lead changes. Four ties, Dunleavy at halftime. We've got Digger Phelps, Steve Alford, the head coach of Iowa. It's all coming up. Coaches versus Cancer Icon Classic will continue in a moment. In a Madison Square Garden last year, these two teams met in the final game of the year. Tonight they're meeting in the second game of the year and Duke has a 32 to 31 lead and one of the reasons that they're playing in this game well 
Steve Alford is one of the reasons. John Saunders, Digger Phelps, and joined by Iowa head coach Steve Alford. First of all, congratulations on a, a tremendous game like that. I have to ask you honestly, did you feel your team would play that well? Well, I think all you can do going into an opener like that is to believe, and I think our kids have believed since late March. Uh, they worked awfully hard last spring. They had a great summer, and we've had a great fall of uh, our conditioning, our weight program, and but we are just 22 days into a brand new program, and I couldn't be more happier for him. I thought you did a great job of taking Dean Oliver early in that game and let him run that team his way, even though he got in foul trouble. That was very important for you to jump out 16 to 4, but it was his leadership. Well, if we're going to be the team we hope to become at the end of the year, it's got to be Dean's show, and Dean's going to have a lot of pressure put on him. It's the junior year, and I think junior year, that's a pivotal year for kids that are thinking about the next level. So uh, we're giving him a lot of responsibility, both offensively and defensively, and I thought he responded last night. Steve, i got to ask you, how much mileage do you get? Because times are different right now. How much mileage do you get out of being such a young guy? Guy that's not that far removed Ooh, he's from being. Uh, no, I'm not talking to you. You're, okay. you're far from a young guy. You get any mileage out of it? The times have changed. It helps to relate to the players. Well, I hope so. I, I don't know. I, I just uh, I try to be myself, and part of my style is getting in there and mixing it up a little bit. And uh, you know, I don't do the full court thing anymore, but half court, I don't mind getting in there and doing a little three on three and showing people how to move without the ball and uh, I probably don't mess with the stance anymore Digger, but uh, I think that's what we have fun with you know shoot arounds I'll get in and you know Jake I got on Jake because he was five and nine from the line last night I told him I said hey, if you make your free throws uh, you're looking at a 25 point night and he said hey I bet with those balls you can't make 10 in a row so shoot around today I hit a College three and an NBA three, and I just threw him the ball. Hey, yesterday, before the shoot around, you come in, I grab you, and I say, hey, let me ask you something. All this stuff about you teaching man-to-man -man defense, I watched it in the end, and you couldn't guard a bank. In the it great was six, comes full cycle. six minutes to go in the game. You make a move. You go to a zone to protect your guys in foul trouble, but Connecticut wasn't ready for it. No, and we had to do that, Dig, right? We had Luresman, Galloway, and Oliver all with four fouls, and uh, – I knew we had to have them down the stretch. They got the lead, so I had to get them in a little bit earlier than what I anticipated. We felt like we had to go zone at that time. Steve, i got to ask you now. You're one of the greatest high school players in the history of Indiana. My buddy here was coaching at Notre Dame while you were in high school. What happened? How did you not end up was, as Newcastle part of the Irish? What happened? The night got him. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he, you know, he got a guy named Scotty Hicks, who's a great friend of mine. and. Uh, Scotty was a tremendous player. We had a great class. There was a lot to choose from in 1983. We had a tremendous class coming out, and he got a great one in Scotty Hicks. Let's get to tonight's game. I really think you got a great challenge. You're ready for this. You go up against a Stanford team. They don't have Mark Matson, but what are your fears going into a game? Will you have a letdown? Well, I hope not. I think our kids are excited, and they, they feel good about themselves. But realistically, we know we got a long way to go. Seven of nine kids that played last year are gone. We're in a new system. But, you know, it is Madison Square Garden, and I think it's something that's very exciting for us. Size is a big concern for me tonight. Yeah, Madison, of course, uh, unavailable for Stanford tonight because diving for a loose ball, the end of regulation, he pulled his hamstring. He's going to be lost for about a month. I know you don't want to see anybody get hurt, but certainly helps you, your team's position. How good do you feel this Iowa team could be? A little better than perhaps maybe you thought coming in? Well, what I've been impressed with is uh, they've, they're really trying. Uh, they're trying to impress the coaches. They're listening. They're following game plans, uh, and that's part of it. We maybe not be as talented as a lot of teams, but they're listening well, and they're trying to get better, and that's a lot of fun to coach. Great challenge tonight, though. Dean Oliver against, uh, you know, Michael McDonald did a good job. He hit the two threes in overtime. An interesting matchup playing man-to-man. -man. Well, it really is, and I've told him that McDonald doesn't carry the same name that Alameen carries yet. But he's an outstanding player, and if you're going to be going from a good player to a great player like Dean hopes to do, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You're playing a game of basketball, and you got to go out every night and do it as best you possibly can. So it ought to be a great matchup. All right, Steve, we expect it to be, and good luck. Thank you for very win much. number two against Stanford, perhaps, is Mike Montgomery. He looks to start the season at 2-0 oh as well. Well, Michael Dunleavy is a guy who started well tonight. Bombs away, part of Duke's lead.
the ACC Big Ten Challenge. It promises to be great. I mean, it was only a few years ago that it was the ACC and the Big East. A lot of coaches didn't like it. A lot of coaches loved it. How would you feel about it as a coach? Coaches are tired of playing <laughs> Cupcake City, so to speak. And what you got going right now basically is this. I can't wait to see what Michigan State does without Mateen Cleaves going to North Carolina. Great matchup with Ed Cote and company. But then the Dukies, they go to Chicago playing the United Center against Illinois. Corey Bradford, I really think the coaches love this time of the year. They like playing these big games. We're seeing a great half here tonight. But that ACC Big Ten Challenge is a big step for both conferences, which I think are two of the best conferences in the country. For Mike Krzyzewski, he gets a chance to return home to Chicago. You know, it was only seven months ago that UConn and Duke hooked up in a classic matchup, won by UConn, the national championship game. And here they are meeting again. We thought it might be nice though, to take a look back through the eyes of the two teams that played seven months ago. For that first 15 minutes, Ricky Moore was uh, like, say, come on, Huskies, jump on my back here where I go, because I'll, I'll guard folks and also score points for you. He was magnificent. Ricky Moore on fire with 11. It was a very uh, tense game. Could have gone either way both times at the end. Blank and shoots a three and he got it. After Treasure hit that shot, you know, that put a lot of pressure on us to come back down and make a play. Elamid picked up by Brand, stopped to go, takes it all the way inside, floats it up and in. If there was a sub at the scorer's table, action would have been stopped as the ball went in. I would have called a timeout. But we had something set up in both situations. And Langdon has the ball coming down to nine seconds. Langdon spins into the lane. He shoots. He walks. He traveled. He tripped. It's over. It's all over. UConn is the national champion. Yeah, but as we said in the opening of the show, you quickly remember that that was last year. What have you done for me lately? How'd you see the first half? First half, very simply for Duke. Michael Dunleavy coming at the 16-minute mark. He was the spark hitting the threes, and Carowell shutting down Alamine. Alamine's got to get his game going if they're going to win. One-point contest right now, as you might expect it, between two of the best programs in the country. Kevin Freeman had a good first half. Duke leads it by one. Matchup to get you ready for what's happening this weekend. Friday night fights. Get you ready for something that's going on tonight. Junior Jones and Tracy Patterson. The NHL tonight in the NBA tonight. And Dick on the NHL tonight. Barry Melrose. Well, you know, he what do you mind? Yeah, he coached Wayne Gretzky when he went to the NHL finals, did he? Did he? Right. Yeah, that's what I, well, I know. You hey, knew I, that? Let me tell you this. Gretzky thinks the world of you. We went to dinner with him. I mean, I'm going to play like a groupie right now. What a super guy he is. Without question, we should have a super second half coming up. Madison Square Garden, coaches versus cancer icon classic. Duke leading Connecticut by one. John Saunders alongside Dick Vitale. Now he's doing a little double duty here. Digger at halftime. You and me <laughs> right now. How did you see the first half? Well, you know, when you look at the first half, I thought both teams played very hard, played with a lot of enthusiasm. Shot selection still a question mark. Elamine did not have a strong first half, one for four. And when you look at Carowell and you look at Battier, they didn't really assert themselves on the offensive end. You look at the numbers right now, John, the four for 10 and three for seven at the three-point line, impressive bench points. Certainly Duke, Duke gets the edge in that situation. And I think the one positive that I saw in that first half was Kevin Freeman really stepping up, going five for 10. Jay Billis, what'd you see? John, out of the locker rooms, UConn talked in the locker room about containing Duke's penetration. They want to do a better job of keeping the Blue Devils out of the middle. They also want to identify shooters. They have been hung up on screens and not fought through. That's why Michael Dunley be able to get 11 points in that first half. Duke wants to push the ball up court faster to get some easier baskets. They've caught the Huskies napping, getting back in transition a couple times. They also want to post higher on the lane. They've been get caught, getting caught too far down low, John. All right, Jay, we'll look for that in the second half as Battier launches a three that's no good. Elamine taps it to himself. Well, Christensen set the screen for Battier to get that look. Oh. Elamine out of control there, turns it over. Jason Williams is running. 
Dumps it to Christensen. Back out to James, who lets fly with a three that's no good. And Saunders has the rebound. They got to make the extra pass to get a little more on the interior. Everything they're looking seems to be on the exterior. Remember last night, LME was quiet for a half and then exploded in the second half. Mooring for three. That's good. Can't allow him to square his body and get a good look. That's his great weapon, the ability to knock that shot down. They looked for Vosco that trip. He got double teamed and got it back out. And those shots are going to be there when Vosco gets double teamed, but you got to get it down there. So Williams answers back. Jason Williams, St. Joseph's Batuch in high school, a vital part of this Duke program this year. You no, know, he's got to have some family members and friends. They told me 30 last night. He needed 30. I told him to go see John Saunders. He's got all <laughs> kinds of tickets. Yeah, but they're for Broadway shows, unfortunately. <laughs> Mooring thinks about the three. Dribbles into a double team. Vosco has it. Vosco, good passer from up high as well. Shot clock is down to seven. Vosco now. Clock at four is more and finally lets it fly off the mark. Rebounded by Jason Williams. You know, he had ten rebounds That's last right. night as a guard. Looks to be a very good rebounding guard. Quick shot. It's good. Deuce, foot on the line. He'll be a big time player, John. I don't think there's any doubt about it. You got to remember now, we're seeing this kid in his infancy. I mean, just starting out as a diaper dandy and a lot of responsibility. Being a point guard at Duke, a team that's expected to win, and you're asked to step in and be an immediate contributor. And, and step in behind some of the great point guards in the history of college basketball. Well, when you think of Bob Hurley and Tommy Amica, Quinn Snyder, Wu Jahowski, they've had their share of outstanding point guards. Liam Avery. Boscoe's hook, no good. Saunders, nobody got a body on him and puts it in. But well, Connecticut does a great job getting good rebound position from the weak side. They seem to be always in the right spot. That's just coaching. You don't win as big as a Jim Calhoun wins and not understand all the little parts of the game. See, right now, Battier's got to get him some scoring inside. He's got to go down there, post to want the wall. Dump it in the wall. Dump it in the wall. Carwell gets fouled by Freeman. I could never understand how guys don't understand the concept of when a guy's got the guy behind him and he's got his back in his gut, dump him the ball inside. To, to put the ball into play. The best guy I saw in college feeding the post was Pearl Washington. He used to feed the post brilliantly up. Williams, tough shot, and then we got an offensive foul going against Duke. Jason Williams, not Shane Battier, and it's his first. Coach K feeling really good, does a great job. Coaches versus cancer. We can tell you about all the beautiful things that Michael K has done with cancer patients, including our own Jim Valvano. Jimmy V Foundation, Mike, a member of the board, is, as we are, Dick. No one works harder to help stamp out cancer than Mike Shishesky. <laughs> James with the rebound. Head to Jason Williams now. Elamine picks him up. Dumps it down. Battier underneath. Can't get it to fall. Tip back up and in by Nate James. Nate James a little active tonight. Played a lot better than he did last night. Last night it was the free ring sign. He was 0 for 8. He's too good a player. McDonald's High School All-American. Mooring. Nice fake to lose James. Then into the paint. Touch won't go. Christensen had the rebound and knocked out of bounds. That's Duke's basketball. We're going to watch dribble penetration. See, once you get in the gap and you attack the defense, it creates opportunities. And that's the area that Jason Williams has got to utilize in his arsenal. Attack the defense. To the corner, Battier for three. Off the mark. James Skyen for the rebound. It's tapped and it's out of bounds. Three point Duke lead. The ACC takes time right now. They lead by three. And tomorrow, college football as the season's getting more and more exciting. Chris Kirk and the coach, college game day at 11 o'clock. They'll be there in Blacksburg, Virginia, looking at Virginia Tech's great defense. And Ron Dane, who's 99 yards away from history, passing Ricky Williams. Then at noon, it's West Virginia, Boston College. Then at 7.30, Virginia Tech and Miami. 
Virginia Tech on the outside looking in right now. There's the Mad Dog, Dad, who's oh, yeah. going to be in the kennel for the rest of the day, maybe for about a month. I was teasing him today at the workout. He's eating his heart out that he can't play. He really was excellent in that second half last night. And Mark Madsen diving for the loose ball before the overtime, which makes it even more impressive that Sanford got that win because he did it without their best player in overtime. Matty A with that good denial inside, good post defense against Saunders. Shot clock is at seven as Freeman hangs, dumps it down to Foskell, who converts. Very unselfish right there. Had the nice little triangle with Freeman up at the top of the line and down in the boxes, Voskell and also, also Saunders. Six points for Voskell. Voskell, nice job on Carowell. Nice Williams finish. loses Elamine, the three no good. Tapped up and around, out of bounds, Connecticut basketball. I think Jason Williams is two three-point oriented he has got to utilize ability to get to the basket that's why Bob Hurley and the threes came and Hurley became a very good college three-point shooter but he always attacked the defense and that will happen with Jason Williams you will see his progress as the season goes on Mooring nice screen set by Boss to free him Jason Williams got really hidden behind the screen. You got to get over the top of that screen. You can't allow him. Right there was an example. He went what we call fourth man instead of going no worse than number three, sliding over the top. Carowell now gets his man Freeman in the air short with the shot. Kept alive. Carowell gets it back. Baseline shot is good. Nice little baseline play. St. Louis, that's right. Cardinal Ritter High School played with Lauren Woods. Hey, Connecticut and Arizona going to hook up in a great eight. And Arizona's going to be very good this year. Saunders gets it up, gets fouled, and gets it to drop. Eight for Edmund Saunders. <laughs> We're going to watch right now how Jason Williams gets caught going behind the screen. Freeze it. See, right here. He gets behind the screen, and he knocks down that three. Edmund Saunders looking to give UConn a three-point lead by converting a three-point play. Got to learn as a young player how to read screens, how to communicate, how to get over the top. See, in high school, you can get away. With your physical talent and you're so explosive and you're a dominant player like a lot of these kids, they can get away with all those little things. Can't get away with that at the big time level. Boozer. Jump hook, no good. Battier with the rebound, and then Battier stripped to the ball. And Mike Krzyzewski is off the bench. Something Mike couldn't do very much last year with the bad hip. He said he feels good right now. Look at him. Show him a little umbrella. He showed him a little umbrella. One of the great coaches that would race the same sideline. Mike wants the over the back. He's not going to get it. You look at his record, 13 years, averaging 29 Ws, eight journeys to the Final Four. So close last year to winning his third national championship. Warren launches from the outside, and it's good. I the think largest lead. When he gives them that kind of offense, they become a really outstanding team. And as a T.O., baby, that's the first time we've heard this crowd really explode. That was the two nights. It was so quiet last time. But he amazed what was happening. That's a 30-second timeout. And they got great fans, John. They love their Huskies. I'll tell you one thing. Stores Connecticut. Gino Ariema, what a job. Number one preseason with the women's program. Duke, they go to the final game with their women's program last year. These are two great basketball programs, men and women. But I still like Tennessee and Pat Summit. You watch them again this year. They beat the national team. See, I follow that women's game. I want you to know that. If they're bouncing a basketball deck, I expect that you know everything about it. No, I don't. No, I don't, John. I make believe, man. Let's check in with Jay Bellis. John, Jake Bosco, although he has not scored much in this ballgame, has been a big key in the second half. Why? Because of his passing and also his screen setting. Twice he has sprung Albert Mooring for open threes, and whenever the ball has gone inside, Duke's defense has collapsed. He's kicked the ball back out for good inside-outside interaction. A much better performance tonight from Jake Bosco. That's 100% right, Jay. He did a great job laying those screens, and that's what he brings to the table. Just like you did when you laid the screens in 86 for Dorkin. Stolen by Mori. They got Uncle Bo on their side right now. Uh -oh, uh -oh. That trade could have been devastating, and then Saunders gets hit. 
going over the back of Dunleavy. UConn right now on a 10-2 run. They had made the last four before that miss by Moore, but he had to take it. They could not get a run last night. The one thing that they did so brilliantly, Iowa, they shut down any kind of run by Connecticut. And if anybody's followed Connecticut over the last 10 years, they've been a club that's had some explosive runs. Edmund Saunders to the bench for Robertson and Azure Dang in the game. Carowell to Battier. Trying to lose Freeman. Carowell launches a three that's short. Barely grazing the front iron, and Battier hits the deck for the ball. Jump ball situation. Possession aerial is Duke. I tell you, Shane Battier always diving, hustling, scrapping, showing why he was America's number one defensive player last year and a great role player last season. Did anything they wanted him to do. Play behind guys like Brandon Langdon in terms of stardom. I tell you, can you imagine? If Duke had all those kids in this lineup, if they had Baghetti and Avery and Brand and also Burgess coming back, I think they would have been heading to be one of the great teams ever to play together. And that's the sad part. We will never, ever see. That is shot no good. Now, the, the freshman that came in that year, if they'd have been able to stay all four years, we would have wow. seen some team. But this is the landscape of college basketball right now. And the nice thing about college basketball is there are high school kids coming up every year. Well, that's what it's like. Seeing some new kids on the block. I can't wait Wednesday to go to my favorite places, Lexington, to see Keith Bogans and Marvin Stone. Nice play. Nice pass by right. Moore into Vosco. Great two-man game. Good inside play. Great execution. Outstanding two-man game. Look at Vosco right now. He's playing Boozer. Sets the screen, releases from the screen. The good rotation, the dump down. What a tremendous job of getting. Now watch the screen. Freeze it right here. Now he's going to release to the goal, bounce the ball in, and they get a little layup right here. Great job releasing to the basket. Vasco, as Jay said, has really asserted himself here in the second half. Let's come on, let's come on. You get Jay Vasco, you get Vasco involved, and you get Boring knocking down the three. They're a different team. No, absolutely. Nine points for Bosco. As we mentioned, oh, he didn't have any. Ashley Dang picks up a little ticky-tacky foul. Yes, that's a silly foul, but again, that's an experience. A lot of young players, that's what they do. They commit a lot of nonsense fouls. That's four on Ashley Dang. Remember, we're playing up that rule, John. After the 10th foul, you have the opportunity to either shoot the free throw or take the ball out of bounds, and I don't like it. I agree with Steve Walford. The game of basketball, the art of it is making free throws as well, and that is the, the, the beauty of it all. A kid going to the line, having to knock that baby down under pressure. I don't like the option. I don't want to move by Battier. Well, that's a momentum breaker, and he had to make the big play and step up as the veteran player on the team. Just six points for Shane Battier. Freeman trying to do likewise on the baseline. Boring tries to dump it back down to Saunders and Dunleavy intercepts ahead to James. James takes it. And what Oscar said, no, I don't know about that, baby. I don't know about that one. It was close, but I got one eye, so I'm giving a break. You got it was close. Less eye and a lot Let's less see. hair than Jake Bosco. Ooh, what do you think, John? It was close. It was close, baby. Garden once again, Shane Battier, just six points, but powerful move here, Dick. Well, there he is, catching the ball on a wing. Nice fake, good triple threat position. Moscow doesn't rotate over, could have taken the charge on him right there. Carowell looking for Dunleavy, has to find Orvac. They got Elamine right now playing Dunleavy, they set a screen for him, he can shoot right over the top. He's got so much size over him. Close inside and post him up a little bit as well at 6 7. To drive, spins. Now James who turns, Rainbow won't go. Freeman keeps it alive right to Elamine and can block. Well, we have two officials, I'm not sure they agree. The first call was made for the block. And Jimmy Burr calls on the charge. Usually it's the first call, 
Bobby Donato's talking to him now, saying, I had a block. He said, I had the block. And now they're looking for a little help from one another. They're going to go with Jim Burr's call. UConn, obviously, the crowd doesn't agree. It's one of those tough calls. Well, it, looks like set. It, it looked like he did give him that step generally that on a play like that they want to have you establish. So nice strip by Alameen on Dunleavy though. He took the ball right away. Just got it right out of his hands. Freeman launches. No good. Foskell tips it around a couple of times to Elamine. Great move on Horvath. Can't convert. Freeman strong on the glass. No good. I think Freeman is really so tenacious on the inside. Connecticut playing with that extra bounce and they're getting it and feeding it off right off this guy right here. He's got the Iverson look, the Spreewell look. Oh, nice little drive. Now watch Freeman inside. See him look at it. Attack of the glass. One time, two times. Elamine travel. Struggling tonight, really struggling. Jason Williams going to check back into the game for Duke. As mentioned earlier, Connecticut Arizona game in a great eight is going to be special. Lauren Woods, they got an outstanding freshman guard, Jason Gardner. And they certainly Michael Wright is going to be a big time player this year for Arizona. But another great matchup will be Kansas and Michigan State. I'll tell you one thing: you watch Roy Williams' club. You talk about the '90s, the job that man has done. But I really believe this year Kansas is going to be dynamite. Chenna with inside at seven feet. Kenny Gregory, Jeff Boshi, I think is going to really mature as a as a point guard. And Nick Collison. Who it got down to Duke in Kansas is there. You remember that diaper, yes. Dandy? Nick Collison. Williams. Bosco comes over. Horvat gets it and he double dribbled. They're really playing well on a defensive end right now, Connecticut. They're fired up, playing with a lot more emotion. Robertson with the ball now. To Saunders. Bosco oh, wants it. He should have had the ball, John. Should have had it. He was wide open. You know, everybody gets out of the kid's case. The kid doesn't get enough touches. I was getting ready to say that earlier tonight that the, the offer we can't really necessarily blame totally on Bosco, especially based on what we've seen tonight. Freeman pulls up, dumps down to Bosco. Right in, there he is. Jake's the man. Right now, Freeman made that happen. Again, we talk about dribble penetration. Dribble penetration. 11 points now for Jake Bosco. Look at him right here. Freeze it. Look at it. He wants the ball. Get him the ball, baby. Get him the ball. He wanted the rock. He got it on the next play. James coming off the screen. Bosco steps up. James loses him. James finally knocks down a big one. Nine points for Nate James now. Six-point lead for UConn. They trail. Get it to him. Dump it inside. Robertson pulls up. Short. Williams with the rebound. You're right, Dick. He, he was wide open. He was wide open in that sequence as well. Posted inside. Christensen tries to create something. James gets the rebound. Comes out of there with it. Dumps it back down. Carowell up with a hook. It's good. Nice post move right there by Carowell. Went down in deep. Sealed off exceptionally well. I'll tell you, Bosco really fighting for position inside. Freeman with it, swings it out to Robertson. Bosco looking at the ref. He said, Christensen mugging me. He's all over me. Saunders down to Freeman. Off the glass, no good. A rebound comes loose. James ahead to Carwell. Almost loses the handle, but gets the flush. And then Mike wants the pressure. He wants full court pressure. Carroll out in transition. We got a good one. Connecticut at Duke, baby. That's the name. The names don't change. The players may leave, but it's college basketball. David Gavin said it one time and said it so beautifully. He said college basketball is about the name on the front of the jersey, the NBA about the name on the back of the jersey. And as long as it says Duke at Connecticut, it's going to be exciting. The question is Duke getting a little run going now down by two. We talked about college football on ESPN. How about the lineup on ABC at noon Eastern, Michigan and Penn State? Penn State, of course, trying to come back from the loss of Minnesota that took them out of the national championship hunt. And at 3.30 Eastern time, regional market, Ron Dane 
will get Ricky Williams' record. Facing Iowa only needs 99 yards. And Nebraska against undefeated Kansas State. Kansas State and Virginia Tech both undefeated, but on the outside looking in right now in the Bowl Championship Series. I think Virginia Tech could be upset city tomorrow with Miami coming down here. And they're great defensively. First time I heard about him was Lee Corso. My Paisan, he's told America, he said, watch out for Virginia Tech. And he was right. I'm going to have to write that down. It's Dick Vitale. He's picking Miami over Virginia Tech. Well, I'm from Florida. You know, you got to stay with the local guys. Yeah, absolutely. I'll tell you, Brad Nestle is sitting up in his room right now. And you know what? We got to salute Brad and we got to salute you. You guys are working OT overtime <laughs> with football and basketball. And Brad headed for Nebraska after being here last night. Hey, I get a chance to sit with you on Friday, with Digger on Thursday, and then on Saturday with Terry Brown. What could be better than that? Oh, more with a three. Well, Jimmy Calhoun says, I'll tell you what's better than that. <laughs> Maury knocking down the trifecta. 16 now for Maury. You tell Terry Bowden to read my book coming out. I read about how he got a world deal. All right, here it is. The steal. Oh! Oh, trying to lose showtime. Saunders then tries with the left hand. No good. Jim Calhoun thought there was a foul in there. Dunleavy wide open. Voskel steps out to meet him. Floater won't stay down. Christensen has it. Trying to fight it up. Saunders with the block. I tell you, Christensen really trying to give his all, but a little bit limited in terms of our, you know, skills. Just a kid playing so hard. Hasn't played in a couple of years. Too. Exactly. He went on a warm admission for two years. He was a medical red shirt, but the one thing you got to admire, he certainly gives everything he has. James coming off a screen. His three won't stay down. Voskel with the rebound. Real danger time right now for Duke. It is danger time. The next three minutes, they can't afford to allow Connecticut to get a spurt. Important possession here as Voskel comes out to meet the ball and drops it to the hands of LME. Freeman. He's been the man. Freeman has been the man for them tonight. And Warren has it. Oh, he's yes. feeling it. Moving screen called and offensive foul. That was big because that goes down, John. You're looking right there at an eight-point lead. 54-49, Jim Calhoun has the lead. UConn's lead is five, and it, it could have been even more if not for the last moving screen. You know, when they had the moving screen, you got to be stationary and allowing that screen and making that happen legally. Now, watch right here. We're going to see him. See the little move? Oh, yeah, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. They can moan and groan all they want. That was absolutely a, a blind guy like me can see that, man, all the way over here. Vosco, though, after having a lot of goose eggs across his numbers last night, except for the foul department, has really come to play tonight, getting out in transition, fighting underneath for rebounds, and then converting the easy baskets. I'll tell you, he looks good at times, John, and take this to the bank. He will play at the next level. There's no doubt he will play at the next level. This year in college basketball, there's some really good centers. Chris Mim's going to be sensational at Texas, Kenyon Morton at Cincinnati. What a team they got this year. Chenoweth, Brendan Haywood. Dunleavy, that's an NBA range three, no good. Christensen chases down the loose ball. Back into the hands of the freshman Dunley. Battier launches an NBA three and gets it. Battier's stop just keeps going up and up and up with all the things he can do. And certainly with his attitude, he's just a solid all-around guy. His family's done a tremendous job raising him. He's got great character. Nine points for Battier and a two-point game. Elamine, everyone steps out to meet him. Mooring puts it on the floor. Nice screen by Voskel. Rolled off of that. Mooring has it now. That's a three on the way, and it's good. I tell you, he's feeling it tonight. He's got the flow tonight. He is the bomb, baby. He is the bomb. 19 points for Albert Mooring. Career high. And that's what they need out of his game. With Richard with the velvet touch now. Sir Richard playing for the Washington Wizards, where he'll be a solid player because of his great stroke. They need somebody to make up for that stroke. And the name is Mr. Moore, who got away with a little push right there. Dunleavy <laughs> hit the deck hard. Freeman has it now. Oh, I love watching these two go head to head. Carroll and Freeman. Oh, what a strong move to the goal by Freeman. He has 13. Freeman won that battle one on one. A little isolation. Pull up from Williams is long. Back to Christensen. Out to Dunleavy launches another long range three. That is short. Sounding too many three point shots, John. Not making the extra pass. Trying to get some offensive sets. 
getting some movement without the ball, with the ball, and just running to the line and letting threes fly. You're not going to win consistently doing that. Well, Duke launched 33 three-pointers last night in the loss to Stanford. you got to have more balance in your offense and inside and outside. They're six for 21 from three-point range right now. Elamin, five on the shot clock, launches a three that's no good. Strong rebound by Freeman. I'll tell you what, he's been a star tonight. He's got that little smile on his face. You can see why he got the gold trophy last year as the MVP of the Big East. It went five of the last six Big East championships, regular season, three out of four in a tournament. What an unbelievable job done in the 90s by Jim Calhoun. Bosco dumps it down low. Turned over and Battier comes out of there with it. To Williams who lets fly with a three. And that right now is the offensive Duke. And that's got a concern. Mike Krzyzewski. Christensen trying to create underneath. And then he and Vosco go out of his Christensen. Grabs hold of Vosco. And the ball. We need no heavyweight championship fights here. That's one tomorrow night with Lewis and Holofield. We don't need one right here. Play some hoops. Play some hoops. This kid's just working so hard. He's frustrated. He's really frustrated. Can't get the ball to fall his way two nights in a row. Freeman talking to Vosco and saying, hey, we need you, big guy. A little bit Playing a great face. game, yeah? Looks like a surfer. I said it last night. Doesn't he look surf city to you? He looks like a surf city guy. There's no surf in Katy, Texas. I guarantee you that. I know that's what Brad Nessler said last night. <laughs> <laughs> you guys think away. Uh, he heads out to California. I can guarantee you that. Approaching four minutes to go here in this game, and UConn has a seven-point lead. Usually it's Elamine time in the last four minutes, winning time. His eyes light up. He loves making clutch plays. I said last night, he's the Muhammad Ali of college basketball hockey. James, though, with the steal there, he has given up with him, and the pass is behind Carroll. Bad play right there. Two on one, you got to get about 12, 14 feet apart. Lady losing her life so early. Great athlete. Our own Jimmy Valvano in his 40s. Uh, my dad, who's in his 80s, but to watch the pain he suffered and what he went through battling that cancer at the end of his life really broke my heart. And I just beg people out there, really, if you know someone you love, just maybe make a little donation on behalf, on behalf of all those people that need your help because we must stamp that disease out. I know, you know, it started Norm Stewart, who was a winner in battling cancer, a big time winner, set the tone. And Jimmy Beheim and Roy Williams have done a great job raising lots of cash for Coaches versus Cancer, and the money goes to the American Cancer Society. And the coaches and those of us who work for foundations that help fight this disease appreciate everything. Nice lean in by Saunders. Saunders down inside. Great post move. They're really all contributing tonight. A different basketball team than what we witnessed last night. Nine point lead is the largest of the game. Carowell's three off the mark almost went down. Saunders then grabs the rebound. I think too many threes, John. I really do. I think that this team is so young, though. Remember, we're looking at a team in November with so many new parts. I mean, this is not the Duke team of last year. And when, once Mike gets time to work with them, I think they'll make those adjustments. Williams hit with the push. Sometimes early like this, playing quality programs like Stanford and playing up Connecticut on the road, both clubs are going to be top 10 basketball teams for sure. I think it's a great way to get the attention of your young players, and Mike will get their attention. Duke's missed nine of their last 10 shots. The last Duke team to start 0 and 2 was 1958 59. Yeah, you're right on top of it. And the last Connecticut, 68 69. Well, because of all these special games now, you get more marquee matchups. Don't get all those Cupcake City games, and that's why you see this happening. Mooring runs out of options, and Jason Williams has a steal behind the back, and Elamine grabs him. This game is far from over, though. You're down nine. It's three possessions the way they fired a three. Jason Williams is going to show some good ball handling skills right here. A little wizardry and handling a rock. Goes around his back. 
Three is good. There's one possession. Battier now with 12 points. Mike Krzyzewski comes with the pressure and denial. James almost gets to the basketball first. Somehow Duke is going to have to find a way to get post presence. That's the one thing in the two games that's been very obvious that they don't have post presence in terms of scoring ability. Freeman ahead of the pack decides to pull it back out. Carroll gets right to him. And tonight they've had some post presence when you look at Connecticut with Bosco, with Saunders, and with Freeman. Alameen has been quiet, but he's distributed the basketball. Hasn't put a lot of points on a board, but they didn't need him because Boring's been so effective. Alameen, shot won't go. Look at Freeman on the glass. Jason Williams, who got up after deck after Alameen is beat him, goes to the hole, and he'll go to the line. See, that's what he's going to do a lot more of, and he has that ability to attack the basket so he can create foul opportunities because that's another part that's missing with Duke right now, not going to the free throw line a lot because they're not attacking the basket. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, this will be their first free throw of the half. Wow. They took just six in the first half, so you're right, not going to the basket. Shooting those three pointers. Don't forget up next is the Edge NFL matchup. Ron Jaworski, Merrill Hodge, and Susie Colbert. They'll preview all the games coming up this week. It's so great to have Susie back at ESPN. Now we get Michelle Tafoya as well. And that's the place to be. ESPN and ABC. That's the place to be. Everyone comes home eventually. Exactly. <laughs> Got so much to offer. Now Duke is the national champion runner-up last year. Looking at going 0 and 2, they would be the first runner-up since 75-76 to do that. It was Kentucky after losing UCLA, and both those teams started 0 for 1 the next year. So this is the first time that's happened as well. Freeman ahead of everyone. Nice catch. Could have got a piece of that lob pass. You mentioned Kentucky. Spoke to Tubby Smith today and Brad Duffy doing their game Wednesday. And I'll tell you, he's excited about his young kids down at Kentucky. Parallel for three. Duke's trying to make up the points in a hurry. Down by seven with under a minute and a half to go. See, that's what happens sometimes. That three-point shot, you try to get everything back so quickly. Duke now seven of 26 for three. Later tonight in about 45 minutes, as a matter of fact, 9 o'clock Eastern time, it'll be Stanford and Iowa in the championship game of the Coaches versus Cancer Icon Classic. And I guarantee you, everyone knows Stanford was good. That was not an upset of Duke. Stanford winning that game. They're strong up front. But I guarantee you, no one expected that it was going to be Stanford, Iowa in the final. You're right, John. And I'll tell you one thing, though. Again, that little victory, and I mean, it was unbelievable. Iowa getting that win sends a message loud and clear how tough the Big Ten is. Well, I got to ask you this. I'm doing my homework for this game. I got your magazine, which, of course, is where I go for my most important <laughs> vital statistic. Uh -oh, You've uh -oh. got Iowa rated seventh uh -oh. in the Big Ten. Well, wait a minute now. Seventh? That's high. Do you know this? Several magazines I was looking at, they were 10 and 11. 10 and 11 in some, several magazines. So that is really a shock that they won that game. But it's going to tell me how tough the Big Ten's going to be this year because there's some dynamite clubs in that Big Ten. But Illinois, Michigan State, Ohio State, and never count out Indiana down to Bloomington with A.J. Guyton. And certainly when you look at Purdue with Cornell and with Cardinal, this could be a heck of a year. Mike Dunphy trying to stay with Khaled Alameen, which just isn't going to happen. That's an interesting yeah, defensive very, assignment. Very difficult in that matchup. Williams oh. takes it to the hole, tips back his miss. Ball comes loose. Robertson has it. Under a minute left, Alameen. Chased down by James, pulls it back out. Well, the Connecticut fans have to feel a little better. Now they go back home, and they'll be unveiling that banner of the national championship team. Tuesday night, they're going to do that. Yes, sir, they're going to unveil that banner. And you better believe it stores Connecticut. They'll be mighty proud. And at Duke, they hung up three banners last year. They hung up the Final Four banner, the banner that indicated number one in the final poll, and also the banner for winning the ACC Tournament Championship. I believe they did the same when Jay was down there in 86. They also finished number two, losing to Louisville, and nervous Mr. What, never nervous Mr. Purvis Ellison. And that year, they were number one in the final poll and hung that banner up. There's no question Mike Krzyzewski would trade those three for the one with the hanging down in Connecticut. 
but he's got a lot to be proud of when that team goes 16 and 0 like they did in the ACC. I mean that is special. And Mike Shashevsky, soon to be a grandfather. I know. So his wow. Oldest daughter Debbie. Mickey. Over. Duke. So. I'll tell you one thing though. You know, you, you think of Duke, and I just think of the enthusiasm and the excitement that it is on that campus when you go there to do a basketball game, and that will not change. And that'll give a big lift to a lot of these young kids. Williams tries to go in. Robertson reached in, and he'll get hit with the foul. You know, John, talking about a lot of teams, as you see Jim Callen still working that sideline, but I know he feels a lot better now. Florida, the Gators are going to be sensational. I talked about great backcourts, and I didn't mention, and I should have, Florida. Brett Nelson, Teddy Dupay, Kenyon Weeks, Billy Donovan's going to have Gainesville just rocking and rolling. Billy Donovan, another one of those young coaches that are cropping up more, From out of more New York, yeah. Yeah. Right out of New York City. The way of Patino. I can't wait to go down there. I'm going to be down here for the Florida, Florida State football game as he misses that free throw and also for the Florida Florida State opening basketball game you got to come on down there Friday night they play that Saturday they play football and I'm just going to be a fan cheering man having a blast you are never just a fan I'm just a fan somehow you show up at Notre Dame I'm just a father going there put my sweatshirt on and I cheer for the Irish I'm not a broadcaster let him football Elamine almost stripped by Williams and then Mooring gets fouled Good, good performance by Connecticut. Coming back, really asserting himself tonight to get this W. Stanford and Iowa coming up at 9 o'clock, Dick. Of course. I like Stanford's depth. I really do. I think Stanford's going to be a really outstanding team this year. Michael McDonald grew up a little bit as that game progressed on the perimeter. Casey Jacobson, were you impressed with him? Extremely. Yeah, he's going to be a young a, guy. He is oh, he's one be of the a best. Scorer freshman in the country and I love the two big kids I think you saw last night for example you saw Jason Collins get 11 rebounds show that with now he looks healthy doesn't have the injuries I met his mom she was so proud last night his brother played well in a box and tonight they're gonna have to both play exceptionally well because Jake's I'll tell you he was sensational for Iowa and I love Dean Oliver Battier with a long range three that rattles down and then the timeout 26 20 seconds rather left 15 for Battier the time is running out on Mike Krzyzewski and Shane Battier go to Dave Ohio State wow Matt darty has got to play against the Buckeyes to make his debut in Columbus they lost an exhibition game by about 30 points last night I Notre saw Dame. that yeah so it's going to be trouble going against a team that went to the final four in Ohio State Matt Doherty welcome to the Big Ten and then of course Kansas State and Arizona your first chance to see Lauren Woods where he was at Wake Forest with Tim Duncan playing yeah, there and then transferred over to Arizona I'll tell you Lauren Woods the kid with a lot of ability and he's going to be surrounded with talent and Lute Olsen has really wielded a lot of magic with kids that have transferred and you look at that club a lot's going to depend on perimeter play can they replace a guy of the ability of Jason Terry who was by far I thought the best player in the Pac-10 last year had a great great season I never ever ever forget UCLA when you talk to Pac-10. Foul. Elamine was trying to weave his way through traffic. Three point shooting. We talked about Duke attempting 33 three pointers last night. And, and tonight they, they are went for 30, 27. 27 tonight. So you're looking at 63 that's, that's three point shots in two nights. I think it's too many. You got to have a little more balance. You know, I got an interesting thought I like to throw out to the people because I'll tell you one thing. It's tough when you think about it. The team of the, the century in terms of college basketball down at Kentucky, they're anointing themselves saying that we are the team of yeah, the century. When you look at all their championships over the years, I believe it's seven national championships. But down at UCLA, they can make a little argument as well because they got 11 national right. championships. And then you can't forget North Carolina with all its Final Fours, national championships. And then you have to ask, what is the criteria? Because if you look at criteria and you say, hey, what about a program that's never been on probation? Never. And that is North Carolina. Does that enter the equation? It'll be interesting to see how some people acclaim the team of the century. I know one thing. His team was the team of the decade. Williams with the long three there. No, I, I think you really have to 
perhaps look later in college basketball history because the rules have changed so much as far as recruiting goes that the reason sometimes those schools were the teams of the century or those current decades were they were just loading up with every single player that was available because you could do that. You can't do that now. So maybe go back 20 years and say, okay, who's worked under the rules of the last 20 years? Maybe those are the best teams. Now, now why would you want to make these complicated and complex <laughs> for me? I'm a simple guy, and you're trying to make these so complex for me. I'll tell you one thing, John. I'm so excited about this year because I think the theme for this year is going to be balanced. I don't think we're going to have a dominant team that will just blow people away all year long. I really don't. And last year, Duke and Connecticut. Remember this. Connecticut never lost the game last year when they had their full right. cast, their full, their full uh, roster. No, exactly. Jake Foskell missed a couple games, and Richard Hamilton missed a couple. And, and Duke was sensational all year. Other than that heartbreaking loss to Cincinnati, they ran the table, and these were blowing people away. I mean, totally dominating people. You can bet this man and this man will have plenty of nights where they're trying to figure out what went wrong, and plenty of nights, most nights, where they're trying to figure out what went right. I tell you, you know, you think about, again, I've got that in my thought here. Duke had 12 Final Fours in its history. Uh, they had five straight in 88 to 92. Had that back-to-back -back national championships. North Carolina's got three national champs, 14 Final Fours. Kentucky, seven national championships, 13 Final Fours. UCLA, 11 national championships, 15 Final Fours. Man, I'm spinning all that information out. My head is rolling it off. Thanks, Howie Schwab. <laughs> the people think I know that. It's provided by our research expert. I was going to say some of those Detroit teams in the mid-70s that you coach could anoint themselves. As I couldn't coach. That's why I'm working <laughs> in TV, where it's so much easier. So for the second consecutive time, Jim Calhoun shakes Mike Krzyzewski's hand after handing him a defeat. Seven months ago in the national championship game, and here in the Coaches versus Classic, Coaches versus Cancer Classic, this time around, it's in the consolation game. Big surprise there. So Duke has a little bit of work to do. They've now lost two consecutive games. They lost two games all of last year, Dick. I know. When you, you look at Duke, though, they'll get back in the gym, and they're going to work on some of their shortcomings. And I believe a player that's going to emerge for them will be Carlos Boozer. I think Boozer has to step up. He's got good offensive skills. Remember, for conditioning, it's been a little slow for him because he had the broken foot. Now coming back from the broken foot, he spent most of the second half on the bench. Jim Calhoun has his first win of the season. He's with Jay Bellis. Jim, an improved performance from last night to tonight. How were things different for the UConn tonight? Well, I think we took our time. When things didn't go well, Jay, we stayed with our offense. We stayed with our defense. And, uh, you know, we just kind of played a, a really intelligent basketball game, which is what we need to play. You like to play a quick tempo. You also like to put on that 2-2-1 press, but tonight you chose not to use the 2-2-1 as much. Why the strategic change? Yeah, we were down a couple kids who weren't going to play tonight, so therefore the situation kicked. But quite frankly, we had a 7 or 8-man rotation as opposed to 9 or 10. We decided not to expend as much energy. The second half, you had two guys step up big. It seemed like Jake Bosco played very well, and so did Albert Mooring. Can you talk about their performances? Uh, just terrific. And, you know, Kevin Freeman, as you know, for the entire game. But LB, you know, but he's been having a great preseason. Last night, he, he got, couldn't get off the snide, but played well. And, of course, Jake was terrific. And I just think as a team, we played very well. We talked earlier today. You told me that this is not really a natural team with natural fits. What did you mean by that, and how can you make it a natural team? Well, you know, I, I think one of the things we have to do is stay with it a little bit longer. There were suggestions at a meeting at about 5 o'clock last night <laughs> in the morning, a.m., you know, about making some movements at that three spot and stuff. And, you know, I really believe that Kevin and some of the guys could play their positions, and obviously they were proven tonight by a little bit of, you know, I believe that they'll eventually will work, but eventually we've got to try to put this whole thing together, much as Mike does. I mean, I think both teams are, quite frankly, kind of reflective of each other. Jim, congratulations on a great win. Thank you, sir. John? All right, Jay, thanks a lot. And UConn, that young fan, has reason to smile <laughs> right now. <laughs> But adorable, were, adorable, one of, adorable. One of the questions you have to ask, though, as far as Duke is concerned, they attempted 29 threes tonight, 33 threes last night. And Mike Krzyzewski, it seems, perhaps 
right now by design, almost as if he doesn't think he has a post game right now. Well, he really doesn't have a post game out there, John. Who is going to be the guy inside? I think Battier's got to invert a little bit more and give them some posting play inside because you have to have that balance because if that three-point shot is not going down consistently, it's just going to hurt you. I think also they got to get a little bit more ball movement. They got to get more people involved, and they also need the penetration ability of Jason Williams, not to be content just pulling up and firing the three. From what you've seen over the last two days, and I know we talked about it before the games were played yesterday, that you feel that Connecticut can win back-to-back -back championships. Anything that you saw that might change your mind? No, I still think Connecticut, when it's all said and done, will be right there in the hunt. I think with Kevin Freeman stepping up, and they get Bosco involved, and they got a kid they got a kid that if he would only right now do the things that Jim Calhoun wants, he could be a factor. So far he has it, and that's Doug Wren, who could be a three-man. Jay Billis is standing by right now with a guy who had a tremendous game, Kevin Freeman. That he did, Kevin Freeman, with 15 points and 11 rebounds. Kevin, you've made the transition from the four spot where you played mostly inside against bigger guys to moving out to the perimeter at the three spot. How has that affected your game, and how did it affect you tonight? Well, I'm trying to learn that, that try to take size and my speed and just try to play a sport in my game. And tonight I did that, and I was able to learn a little bit more at the three and hopefully I get better each game. Last night, not a performance reflective of the way people thought UConn would come out after winning the national championship. From your perspective as a player, what happened last night? I think we're a little flat. You know, Iowa played a great game, and they came out confident. We had to get the confidence up. You know, and that, was, that hurt us a lot, but we got to bounce back from that. Can't put our heads down, and Michigan State did the same thing last year. It was 0-2. got to turn around and play basketball. A different team this year for UConn than won the national championship. Richard Hamilton in the NBA. Ricky Moore also is gone. New guys in new roles. What's the biggest adjustment for your team? Just learn to play basketball with each other. We had such a great chemistry last year, playing for three years together. Just find each other, know where each other's on the floor. And if we can do that, get that chemistry going, we could be a good team. Kevin, congratulations on a great game. Thanks a lot. John, back to you. All right, Jay, thanks a lot. And so Madison Square Garden now awaits the next game, the championship game between Iowa and Stanford. But the season has started for Duke, and they are 0-2. Coming up next, it's the Edge NFL matchup. And, of course, a reminder at 9 on ESPN, Stanford taking on Iowa. Once again, the final score, 71-66 UConn for Jay Billis and Dick Vitale. Thanks for joining us, and good night.